Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the emulation performance of the all new Odroid N2 Plus. And this new single board computer from Hard Kernel is actually turning out to be one of the most powerful ARM based single board computers that I've ever tested on my channel. I recently posted a first look slash test video on my channel. I'll leave a link for that in the description if you're interested in checking it out. But in this video, we're going to be testing out our favorite emulators on the N2 Plus, all the way down to PS1 and on up to the Dolphin emulator for GameCube. But before we jump right into it, I just want to give you a basic overview of the specs. For the CPU, we have the Amlogic S922X. This is the revision C of the CPU, so it can be overclocked to 2.4 GHz. It's a 6-core CPU, 4 A72 cores at 2.4, and 2 A53 cores at 2 GHz. The GPU is the Mali G52 MP2, running at 800 MHz, and you can get this with 2 or 4 GB of RAM. I'm not going to bore you with any more of the specs, but for this video we're going to be running Android 9. This is the official Android 9 build from Hard Kernel with support for the Odroid N2+. Now there are other retro operating systems that will work on the Odroid N2+, but they were kind of designed for the N2 so we don't have the overclocking capability, and we don't have access to the Vulkan backend with those operating systems just yet. But all of that is included with Android, and that's why we're going to be using this for this video. Alright, so starting it off, we have PS1 using RetroArch and the PCSX Rearm Core. I know this runs great on lower end single board computers, but I still wanted to make sure we got that kind of performance here with the N2 Plus, and as you can see, it's working great. Now with each one of these games you're going to see running in this video, I will have the FPS either in the top right hand corner or the top left hand corner. I'm also going to have the name of the system, the name of the emulator, if I'm upscaled or not, and the name of the game. We have Dreamcast using the Redream emulator. I'm upscaled to 1920 by 1440. Everything's working great here. As long as the game's compatible with this emulator, you'll have no trouble running it, even at an upscaled resolution like this. I got a couple more Dreamcast games I want to test, and then we'll bring it up a notch. Moving over to some Naomi and the Thomas Wade using RetroArch and the Flycast Core, I can say this runs really, really good, even with the 3D games that are compatible with the Flycast Core. Here's some N64 using the Mupin 64 Plus Next Core. I'm even upscaled to 960 by 720. Overall, N64 runs great on the N2 Plus.
Moving over to PSP using PPSSPP. This is Ridge Racer. I'm using the Vulcan back in here. 3x resolution with this game. Pretty good. It's not the hardest to run. We'll get to those in just a second. But I wanted to show you the performance that you can get out of a majority of the games for PSP. Here's Daxter. I was able to take this up to 4x resolution. This ran natively on the original PSP hardware at 30 FPS, so we can take it up just a bit more here. Overall, performance is great. Yeah, being an Otso might be useful after all. Now it's time to take a look at some of the harder to run PSP games. This is Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition. I'm at 1x resolution with no frame skip. We're getting full speed here, 60 FPS in arcade mode, 30 if you're doing multiplayer. But if you do want to up the resolution, you will have to turn on frame skip. I'm going to go to 3x with one frame skip. That's going to bring us to 30 FPS, still fully playable. And in my opinion, it looks 10 times better. God of War, we kind of have the same thing going here. 1x, no frame skip, it is playable. We're at 60 FPS, but we have a very low resolution here. So what I did was take it up to 2x resolution with one frame skip, still using the Vulcan back end. We're getting 30 FPS. It still feels okay. I mean, I would personally rather have this running at 60, but it does make it look a lot better. And in my experience, this is actually some of the best performance that I've seen out of an ARM-based single board computer. Sega Saturn's another one I always like to test. Here we have Sega Rally. I'm using RetroArch with the Yobas and Shiro Core. It's looking good here. We're getting 60 FPS. It's fully playable. I did try the Beetle Core, but unfortunately we just don't have enough CPU power. So a lot of the Sega Saturn games are going to be running at 60 FPS, but I did have an issue when I moved over to Virtual Fighter 2. It's a little odd, but it dropped down to around 54 to 55 FPS. And this game has always given me trouble on ARM devices. It seems to be one of the harder ones to run for Sega Saturn. Now that Citra is available for Android, I figured I'd go ahead and test it here. If you're not familiar with Citra, this is a 3DS emulator. It does work well on high-end devices, but as you can see here, it's pretty slow on the Odroid N2+. And going into this, I figured that would be the case, but I had a few people ask about this when I initially did my kind of review and first look video at the N2+. And this really comes down to raw CPU performance. Even though we have that overclock of 2.4 GHz on the N2+, it's just not enough for this 3DS emulator. And finally, we have the Dolphin emulator for some GameCube games. Now, in my initial video I made on the N2+, Plus, I tested out Soul Calibur 2 and Mario Sunshine. Definitely check those out. I'm using the Vulcan back in here with the latest version of Dolphin from the official website. This is Beautiful Joe, and performance is actually really good here. But this doesn't mean that every single GameCube game is going to run at full speed on the N2+. Plus. Let's test a couple more here. Here's Wind Waker. This runs at 30 FPS on original GameCube hardware, and we're so close, just like we were with Super Mario Sunshine. It's just not cutting it, though. Hopefully, in the near future, we can get a little bit of a GPU overclock, or even a higher clock on the CPU to get this at 30. But right now, we're hovering around 27 to 28. But overall, this is actually really great performance for an ARM single board computer. So the last two games you saw were running with the Vulcan back in, and that's definitely the way to go on the N2+, but there are some games that have graphical issues when using Vulcan on Android, or for this specific board, like Mario Kart. So I had to swap over to OpenGL, and the OpenGL performance is much worse than Vulcan, as you can see here. 
Like I said at the start of this video, there are other operating systems available for the N2 Plus, like Botocera and EMU Elect, but the reason I didn't choose to use those is because we don't have access to GameCube and 3DS in those operating systems, and we cannot use the Vulkan backend with the higher end stuff like PSP, and it definitely helps out with a board like this. But in the end, I'm really impressed with the emulation performance of the Odroid N2 Plus. Those higher clocks on that CPU definitely make a difference, and we do have access to Vulkan here with Android, which is a big plus for a lot of the harder to run emulators and games. But that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If there's any other operating system or emulators you want to see running on the N2 Plus, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.